right. And um, okay, so welcome, folks. It's nice to meet all of you. Um, shortly, I'm going to ask you to turn your um, videos off. Um, and apart from you, the speakers, I'm going to ask you to turn your microphones off. Um, today, we're having our second session about assessment. And um, we've got with us um, two wonderful people. We've got um, 7MPM, G7, KKKW, um, who is Katrina. And um, she's from Welcome Bay School in Tauranga. And we have Drew from Waimea College in Nelson, in, yeah. the, in the mainland. And what we're going to be talking about, uh, we're going to start off with Katrina, who will talk about um, using Seesaw as a tracking tool for science capabilities. And Drew will talk about science capability assessment in Waimea. And um, Katrina, you're talking about primary level. And Drew, are you talking about secondary? Uh, yeah, the junior secondary level. Good. Yeah, cool. Okay, so the way that we'll run it is that we'll have, um, Katrina will start, she will talk for up to 20 minutes and she'll be sharing slides and stuff. And then we'll have a wee break for um, any questions. And then um, we'll hand over to, um, to Drew and do the same thing. And then at the end, we'll have a wrapping up session. Okay. Um, if you want to um, use the chat for asking questions or saying you're going too fast or whatever, along the bottom of your screen, you should see a little button that says chat. And you can click on that and then it will open the, um, the chat bar. Okay. Michael, so, do you want me to turn off my video when I share my screen? That's, that's uh, when, you t when you share your screen, it goes off anyway because the sharing okay. screen goes over the top of it. Super okay? cool. Now, I, I just need to make sure before we, do, before we start. Oh, yes, I'm just checking that we're actually recording. Okay, jolly good. Well, it's over to you, Katrina. I'm looking cool. forward to this. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Ta -da. I just need to find the right thing. Yep, you're there. Good on you. There we go. And I just need to get shift it. No. Cool. Here we go. Good on you. Good on you. Well done. Right. Um, Kia ora everyone. I think virtually all of you know me already um, and that I'm Katrina Daniels from Welcome Bay School. Um, yeah, I got this lovely email just a little while ago to ask if I could share um, how we are assessing our science capabilities and the tools that we're using. And I know that for Lorraine and Lauren, you've already heard this whole spiel, but it's always good to hear things again. So, um, right. Oh, you love that. Don't you just love where it says loading? Hmm. Let's pop out of that. It'll get there. <sighs> there you just are. Slow. Try again. No. <laughs> hmm. It will get there. Just we'll just it's loading, see, down the bottom. Yeah. Yes. Very be. slowly. Have you got a slow um, connection? Yeah, because we're rural, it can be a little bit unstable. Okay. Which is always concerning. Anyhow, what it is, is it just gives you a little bit of context for our school. We're a decile four in the Bay of Plenty. Um, we have, as of today, 356 children. Um, we're about 44% Māori. Pacifica is around eight to ten percent, and our Asians are at sitting at about three, which is a huge increase for us. Um, and everyone else is European of some description or another. Um, we teach in modern learning environments or ILEs or whatever you would like to call them, um, and we have four collaborative teams. So our zero zero to ones, two threes three, fours, and five, sixes. Um, and 
in my opinion, it's a pretty fabulous place to work and yeah, I love it. So I'm going to skip that slide for whatever reason it didn't want to load and share it with you. Um, what I thought I'd start with is the why we assess our science capabilities and it is something that we came up with as a collective. So we, the whole purpose is to inform where we're going next with our teaching and learning um, and it it's a way that we can assess how effective we are being in terms of what we're doing. And we spend quite a lot of time looking at the patterns that we come up with, be it the things that our children are really grasping and applying across the curriculum and things that either as teachers we're avoiding, so we haven't taught it at all, or things that we have taught but we need to go back and do it in a different way because it wasn't successful. Um, and we do that within our own hubs and then again um, looking at school-wide patterns as well. And one of the key drivers behind it all has been sharing and engaging our whānau in our children's learning so that they can see how valuable teaching and learning through science is and the impact that it has for their children. Um, and we were really brave when they took out national standards for our um, charter targets, we put in a science target and that was it, no reading, writing or math, because everything else, was it was our belief that we would teach it through those things instead. Um, the little clips on the side are just examples of seesaw posts and how they will look to our whānau as we go. Um, the what, so the tools we use, are seesaw for schools, which is the full paid version. Um, and we chose it because the years roll over. So your year zero child that start, starts with it, when it rolls over, you keep those portfolios forever. Whereas virtually any of the other versions at the end of any year, that, that data is just archived and then inaccessible, which then doesn't really serve a huge purpose for us personally. Um, we use progressions that we, uh, how we've set up our skill set. Um, but I've been told that those aren't the big focus, which is, is cool, but they were a starting point for us in terms of developing student and clerical knowledge. Um, and we use both the junior science thinking with evidence um, assessment and the science engagement survey. Initially, we used science engagement survey with everybody, but now that our senior school uses the um, thinking with evidence, we only do the engagement survey with our zero to threes as a way of sort of just adding to our data set. Um, so the how, the big thing is that it is real time. Um, whilst our um, thinking with evidence is twice a year and our engagement survey is once a year, everything else is done, it can be done anywhere, anytime. And that's really important to us rather than us teaching to a set assessment. It's gathering that picture of our teaching and learning day to day rather than it being a one off. Um, we do a combination of very explicit tasks that as we move forward are becoming um, more similar across the school. Um, but our aim is Oh, yeah, like I said at the beginning, is our school is all about curriculum integration. So rather than it being just science as an individual strand, it's something that is incorporated or everything is incorporated into it as our ideal. Um, and our how is also incorporated into upskilling staff because if we have staff who aren't on board, then it's a bit like paddling a walker alone. So we have one staff meeting per term which is led by myself and the science team and we will give them a task that could be adapted to any age and their whole purpose is to complete the experiment or whatever it may be and then um, they then have to look for the science capabilities that they could assess from it and the strands that they could assess from it, what writing, reading, math, technology and everything else that could fall from that as well rather than it you having to do multiple tasks to achieve one goal. We do triangulate and moderate. So we use all of our different assessments to build a bigger picture. And the moderation journey for us is very early days. 
in terms of across the school there's a lot of it that happens in an individual hub but we're still on that journey in terms of making sure that my team would give the same level for something as one of the other teams but that's a journey that we're on um, and it definitely informs our Bano and our board of trustees and this year it also informed Aero who sent a special um, science assessor in as well which was very cool. Um, these are the progressions that we use and there's a little blurb acknowledging who they're based on. What we as a school have chosen to do is we've chosen one of the capabilities as our focus that we have to gather data on and then we compare it across the school. Um, it does not mean that it is the only capability we teach, but it is one that we're being measuring how explicit and effective we are being with it, not just not just from a student achievement lens, but from a teaching and professional lens. Um, the reason that we chose the progressions that we did is we acknowledge that they're not perfect, but that they were a really good starting point. And because they're broken down, it helped with developing our teacher knowledge so that they could see how a learner would progress. And we worked very hard to get away from the fact that all learners will start at level one for everything, um, irrespective of the age, that they may be a real mix of the, of the levels, which is really important. Um, and it was a basis for being able to then enter skills into Seesaw. Um, just because of the way Seesaw is structured, it likes levels, or it actually likes grades, but we adapted them accordingly. <clears throat> so one of the things we liked about the progressions we chose is that they are really in kids speak. And one of the big things that we noticed when we did our very initial data set is that there was lots of science happening and the capabilities were in evidence but the children and often the teachers weren't ever articulating them or necessarily even aware they were doing them. So what we did is unpacked it and the aim is to have consistent language school-wide so that as children move through all they're doing is building on it rather than starting from scratch every time. Um, our children are certainly becoming really articulate using it and are able to tell you exactly what they are doing when they are thinking and acting scientifically, which is incredibly exciting to see. And one of the real successes for me is hearing our teachers when they're delivering it and you're hearing a shared language and a shared vision across the school and that they're seeing the science in everything they do rather than it just being when they're doing an experiment or yeah, it's, it's really exciting. Um, our capabilities are assessed across the curriculum um, and like I said it is really Im important to us that we are trying to assess smarter and more purposefully so that if you when we're looking at the at tagging skills and seesaw that you're trying to find a task that will encompass a multitude of things rather than just one um, so this is what it, the possibilities of what it can look like. The picture on the left of your screen is a sample of the um, science capabilities and the skill levels. So where it says L2, it's curriculum level two, and the number that's underneath it, like the two, four, three, et cetera, is the number of entries under each of those skills. So this young lady is a year five student. And if you were to click on any of the numbers in white, what it does is it then takes you to all of those entries. So you can share with parents and, and be really explicit if you're having a learning catch up or discussing with them what their child is doing and where to next. You can show them, click on it and it brings up the evidence. So what the child was doing and even better is that the kids, kids can then talk about it themselves because it, it's a combination of entries that they have put in themselves and teacher directed tasks so it builds a yeah a really awesome awesome picture and when we look across that line you can see that she's predominantly working at or very comfortably working at level two and three and the the skills that she has developed and some areas where we really need to do some building so our net it informs our next steps um, there are 
across that screen, if you had the whole lot, there are about 17 skills that have been tagged, which are all science related. Um, yeah, so it is quite exciting. The box on your right is a snapshot of some of the student entries. So that very top box is our sample student, which we have to model how to do things. So we don't never tag skills against them. But it gives this screen gives us the capacity to track a pattern. So this is a year five, six class. And it's really exciting to see that no one is tagged in level one, that all of the tagging of skills is happening at least at level two and and above. So level two and even some in level four, um, which is fantastic. And so you can look for gaps and patterns. No one is yet working at curriculum level five, which is disappointing, but still not not unexpected um, with the maximum of 10 year olds. So what, I do, what I've done is I've screenshotted a singular entry from one of our boys and this was a culmination of his learning and his learning the coloured boxes are all um, the curriculum areas and that they're stored in folders that the either when the parents access it, they can click on it if they only want to look at their child's reading that they've been doing or science, they can narrow it down and we can do the same as teachers and the children can do the same for their own portfolio. And increasingly, we're trying to teach the children to be able to tag the different curriculum areas that they have utilised rather than us telling them, we want them to be able to tell us. Um, and this young man was able to pull out all of the different curriculum knowledge and skills that he'd been able to use and then the grey boxes underneath are the skills themselves. At this stage through Seesaw, um, you, the skills aren't visible to parents as a, um, when they're signed in as a parent but when they come into school you can share them with them and print them out for them. So there is a way to do that. Um, and I opted not to put the video in because I think my whole internet connection would have fallen over if we hadn't, hadn't done that. But it started with an article that he'd read and then it moved on to a whole range of, well, not an article, sorry, a, um, the story Wombat Stew. And then he had to adapt it and do a whole lot of research that sat in behind it. Um, yeah, so the, I guess the key thing is, is we're working towards our children being able to recognise what it is they're learning to do and the skills required to be able to do it and then what they think they need to do next. And particularly with our young ones, we have to support them with that because that's, that in itself is a whole host of learning. And they're now, now able to see how they are thinking and behaving scientifically when they're doing... 101 different things from when they're outside throwing a rugby ball around you can hear them talking about the different mechanics of it and how they're gathering data about the other team and it's yes yeah, it's incredibly exciting um one of the exciting things that we get to do is share with our board of trustees and they're very keen on hard data in particular um i guess because it's quite possibly the easiest for them to understand and it gives them a real set measure. Um, they like to be able to, or, and, and at my principal, very definitely likes to be able to track the cohorts as they move through the school. So this, we've just done our um, second uh, thinking with evidence assessment this year, but I haven't put that slide in. So we can see the movement again. And it's been very similar, everyone has, improved which is what we're wanting to see and our in 2018 what happened what we noticed is our year fives were low in all areas they'd been a low cohort from the beginning and we were able to see that when with this assessment they were no different but as our teaching became more explicit and the things we were doing became a lot more engaging and relevant to them, it shifted not only their ability to think and act scientifically, but their ability in writing tracked perfectly with it, which was a huge success. Um, and that that's been maintained whilst they dropped a little bit at the beginning of the year, they didn't drop back to their starting point and have tracked beautifully throughout the year. 
and sitting alongside that has been a huge improvement in behaviour as well because they can see a relevance and importance to their, um, to their learning. Um, one of the things we do do with our written assessments, or sorry, not written, uh, assessments like the thinking with evidence, is the children have the option to have a reader because we're not assessing their ability to read, we're assessing the thinking. And one of the things I shared at our, the three-day catch-up that we had was in that box on the right, is there is a little tiny black dot right in the middle of it, up incredibly high. And this is one of our very high additional needs young men. And he had a reader and sat in a one-on-one -on -one room with a teacher aide. And he was the only child across the school to score 100%. And the world that that opened up for him and his whanau and the change in the lens that our teachers had for him was just immeasurable. Um, so, yeah, it's just one of the many tools sitting in and alongside Seesaw that helps to engage our families and really capture a holistic view of their learning and of their explicit skills and strategies that they are using to to um work in the world and to inform their learning so that's the main main things i have um so i will hop out of there and i guess tricky to know how much to tell you when i have no idea how familiar you are with seesaw as a tool can I just um, butt in there for a second? Sure. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. A couple of things, um, and then we'll throw it open to other people to um, mm -hmm. ask questions and discuss. I was um, really fascinated that you chose the monarch butterfly as an example, because our monarch butterfly hatched today, this afternoon. Oh. So that was a nice coincidence. The second thing is that um, being um, a, a, a bit ignorant, um, could you tell me, because I don't know about Seesaw, where mm -hmm. it comes from and a um, little bit, tell me a bit more about, about what, it's, what the whole thing is about? Sure, sure. So I can actually take, I very deliberately had it open. Is Seesaw is an online portfolio and it is a um, portfolio that was designed and based in the US. So some of the things don't suit us and um, are tricky to support. So their year, one of their things that is quite challenging is that their year runs July through June mm -hmm. because of when their school school um, comes up. But if we click on a classroom, I'll just shift that over. And this is what it would look like when our children log in. So they will see a notice that I've put, which goes to everyone. Um, and there are a couple of things, but then I can pull up an individual student at any point and it will think about giving it. So they'll see the post for everybody, but then they will see things which are unique to them. And from within that, I could click on skills as an example. When it gets there. <laughs> when it gets there, it's just thinking slowly. Yes. Here we go. So I can pull up a particular student. Let's choose, it doesn't matter who we choose. And we're tagged into, and that would come up with every skill that we've ever tagged. Um, so if we do gathering and interpreting data and click on that, it will then bring up the specific entries for this child and what he's done. And so these are shared real time when the children post them or the teacher posts them, it's shared real time and the parents will get a notification on their device to say that it's been posted a little bit like um, Facebook or Seesaw, or, oh, sorry, okay. Facebook or Instagram or any of those, they can like it, but they can also write a comment back to the child. And so when the child logs in, it will pop up and show them so that they get that immediate response. And we have families who literally, the child will hit send, and within 30 seconds, there'll be 
a reply or a question and the kids love it absolutely love it and they can give each other feedback which for our juniors is still a work in progress in terms of how to do that um, so how to acknowledge something that they've done well just like they do orally and then to be able to either give them a suggestion or ask them a question for more information so it's yeah it's a really powerful tool <laughs> very, very clever thank you I'm, I'm sorry to hog the question that question but um, it's opened it up to anybody else who if, if you want to um, ask a question please or make a comment please switch on your microphone and speak there it's Jean here because you know that I can't help myself um, <laughs> How do you how do you teach the kids to be evaluative about what they do? You know, um, because so they post, they make posts, and mm -hmm. some are more descriptive than others. And you know, it is a really interesting journey for them. And I noticed you modelling down in this particular post. You are being a scientist and using your senses to notice things. So yes. you're giving them the language. Are the, do do you have to be more? Is modelling enough, or do you have to be more interventionist, or do you have to be really explicit to encourage them to actually be evaluative of what they're doing rather than describing the activity? Um, it, it depends on whether what we've been, it depends on the purpose of what we've been doing, I guess. Mm -hmm. The aim is to be really explicit with the language and even if they give you um, language in return that, you know, it's yucky, so then mm -hmm we will pry and dig deeper. So the aim is to be really explicit and we spend a lot of time building the vocabulary that sits in and around it yeah. and recognizing the skills and I get well the capabilities, but the mm. specific skills that they're using. Yeah. Um, and it is, yeah, it's a work in progress and it looks quite different as the children transition up through mm. the school. So as they progress into the seniors, they'll have a whole lot of, they'll have written models and clips that they can watch so that it's really multifaceted. Whereas for our juniors, so much of it is very tactile um, and it has to be experience based. One of the, the things that our children as a whole lack at school is experiences. Um, so for them to be able to make connections between all of these different things requires us providing those opportunities to do that and through role play through 101 different different mm. tools. Did that really, I don't know if that, that answered no, your that, question. That, no, it, that's exactly right because it's um it's got so much potential. It really can be really rich. Mm. Kind of, it's sort of like the sort of whole notion of in early mm. childhood when you have learning stories and you can annotate those to make yeah. them richer and richer as you sort of analyse them. But if you get the yeah. kids that as well as yourself I mean that's just really exciting isn't it one of the things we've noticed in terms of with Fano engagement is the most powerful tool we have for commenting on it because we will have had this conversation with the child when we typed in that that comment mm. it's, uh, that if we actually record the comment because for some of our families literacy is a challenge mm -hmm. but if they click on and listen to the language you've been using with their kids they then begin to use it themselves. And when they come in, they say, oh, yes, I hear all about how they're um, observing closely and having to, yeah. So they're sharing that language back and how they're being a scientist when they're doing other things, when they were playing sport and having to work out how fast they could run, that they had to gather data. And to hear the parents repeating it back means that we are being successful and changing how the children are thinking and behaving and seeing themselves. So yeah. that's fabulous. Well mm. done. Mm. Excellent. I'm so excited by this. Mm. So are we. <laughs> um, kia ora. I just wanted to say this has been amazing to listen to. Um, oh. you're just doing, sounds like you're doing some brilliant things that are really making a difference for your students. Um, I, I was curious to get an example of one of the activities that you might have done with your staff that they then went and used in their classroom. Sure, sure. Um, gosh, ooh, what could we start with? Um, we, our whole focus for the year has been on kaitiakitanga, and one of the things we've 
sorry, these little bugs coming in. Um, one of the things we did is um, looking at predators and organically each hub has ended up exploring it and then sharing what they've been doing. And so for term, for our term two meeting, I think it was, um, we dressed up as dock officers and there was a huge problem and that there'd been a possum explosion and that um, one of the children had designed, was wanting to design something new to export the possums back to where they came from. And it all came from a little YouTube clip that we watched about how they airlifted, um, they were beavers or something, and they'd created these fancy little parachutes. And I thought, aha, I know that there's a parachute thing on, what's it called, ARBS. So we used an ARBS activity geared at level three and four of the curriculum where they had to then design a parachute to be able to carry a small box with a possum in, and we were going to airdrop them back to Australia. <laughs> and so we did that with the staff, and they had to make these parachutes and test what, how fast they would fall and a box that it could hold, you know, but just a model size, and then they could take it back and use it in their classroom, whether it was only doing the parachute, because our folk, our um, knowledge strand had been um, material world so we'd initially going, be going to make them out of plastic bags but then of course the children are going but plastic's bad and you can't get bags anymore so then they had to come up with something else and it evolved into it took its own path um, but it's it's really powerful having all the staff there and then mixing the teams up so that you don't have your year one teachers going I just could, that's not accessible for my little kids. Or the seniors going, well, that's not going to challenge them enough because the dialogue that you get happening is really powerful. Um, we've done another one that was, gosh, what was that? What was our last one? Uh, think, think, think. Um, our last one was to do with Lego and having to create a model um, of a way that you had been a kaitiaki, so it was all about making connections with our world and how you had been a kaitiaki, so they had to make a model of something that they had done or created or made, and again it was something you could take back into the classroom because we had the big kits from Lego New Zealand in school, um, and I think that had a 100% strike rate, and how they could then make connections between the science they'd been learning and with other areas of the of yeah, expertise and the engineering that sat in alongside it and hmm. uh, thank you I love how creative you've been it sounds like a lot of fun and it, it has to if it doesn't engage the well my belief let me rephrase that is that if it doesn't engage our teachers they'll go back and be flat when they deliver something and it was less likely to engage the children but if they go back all hyped up and ready to go then our kids go oh my god this is going to be amazing and it has a huge flow on effect. Well, you've got me wanting to do those activities. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Yeah, nice job. Thank you. So when's the, when's the plane taking off? <laughs> well, I think it would take off any day if our kids had their um, <laughs> way. But the, that's the thing I love about delivering most of our learning through a scientific context. So all of our writing virtually all year has come from that. Everything from... We looked at the more and things that were Tonga to New Zealand and then the children were all upset because they were extinct and we looked at this and made a, a life-size model and so on and so forth and then fortuitously the new footprint was found and it challenged all of the stuff they had and that was it just took its own path from there so yeah uh, yeah it's hugely powerful I think we probably need to um, move on to um, give Drew a turn because. Um, yes. uh, can, I, can I ask one question? Yeah. Sure. Sorry. <laughs> um, thanks, um, Katrina, for sharing. This looks amazing, and um, the change in language that the students are having um, mm -hmm. and and their whānau is just awesome to hear. Um, are the students? Do they post their own evidence on the seesaw as well? Yes. Yes. So the aim is our aim is to have. 80% um, of the posts being posted by the children. So the one that's up on my screen, mm -hmm. the um, Allegiance did alongside a buddy. So he had to get a friend to take the photo. Mm -hmm. 
and then when they do a post we have some rules around it so if all he'd done is put the picture you might expect that from a year zero sure but by the time a year zero has done a couple of posts you would expect them to be able to click record and record it orally because you know they're many of them are not yet going to be up to labeling it but they need to give something that gives the context for it um and our it varies. There is still variation across the school uh, with the quality and consistency of posts, but it has improved a lot, um, particularly when our new entrant teacher, is a, if she's able to teach a five-year-old, it's very difficult for any of the other teachers to be able to go, you know, my child can't do that. Um, so it is, we want it to be driven by the children because then they have ownership of it. Um, and then they also go home and go, in case there hasn't been a response from mum or dad or nana or court or whoever, they go home and go, have you seen that I put on there? And that pressure is uh, hugely powerful. Oh, that's great. And do, do they tag, I see there's some tags on the, your screen at the moment at the bottom in, in light grey. Do the students make yes. those tags? The... Those are the skills that we, um, we tag at this stage, the, uh, the capacity in the programme doesn't allow the children to tag it. We, our aim is to be talking to them about those skills so that they know exactly what it is they're doing and then what they where they would go to next. We're mindful that at this stage, a lot of the talk is about what they are doing, what the skills are that they're using, mm -hmm. um, because it can, become, it, can, it can be confusing when you're trying to shift a mindset and, and grow the language to then add in you know, this is what you're doing next. So it's making sure that they're really clear on how they are being a scientist and and then what what they're going to do next will come. Will come. It's a work in progress. But they have to tag, like he's, he's only tagged action, learning and inquiry. Um, and as we move through, hopefully he'll learn that he could have tagged science and oral language. And but yeah, he's six. <laughs> so <laughs> we're okay with that. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, Drew, do you want to um, share yours? Thank you, Katrina. We'll come back to you at the end okay. if we have any further questions or observations. Over to you, Drew. Switch on your um, microphone, please. Yeah, thank you. Great. Um, yeah, thanks. It's a tough act to follow. Um, it's quite different from a um, secondary perspective, maybe. Um, but here we go. So um, I'm going to be talking about our nature of the science assessments that we're using at Waimea College. Um, we're a decile eight secondary school, and we have 1,650 students. Um, and basically what I'm going to cover is these things. So uh, why we change the way we're looking at assessing. Um, I'll go through an example of an assessment. Um, excuse me, excuse me, do you, are you sharing your screen? Am I not? I'm sharing my screen with myself, obviously. <laughs> um, down the bottom, have you got the... Yeah, uh... I'll come back to it, sorry about that. Okay, cheers. Where are we? There. Yeah. Is that better? Yep, yep, coming. Okay, is it working now? Yep. Oh, great. Fine. Sorry, so I'll be talking about nature of a science assessment at uh, Waimea College. Uh, and this is sort of an outline of what I'll cover. So why we change the way we're doing assessment, uh, some examples of an assessment, and what we found out and what where we're heading to and heading to next. Um, so first of all, why we changed. So, um, a lot of what we do in the school is, is dictated in a way by the, the senior management um, and our school decided uh, at the end of last year that they wanted to change how the school is going to be reporting on junior science. Um, so we report twice a year. Um, we have to do a 400 character written report focusing on the key competencies. And the school decided that we're going to be reporting on curriculum levels and we're going to break down each curriculum level into beginning, proficient, um, or advanced, so BPA grade. Uh, and then on each report, there must be three assessments and, uh, sorry, three marks on each report. 
And all of our year nine assessments are going to be set at level four of the curriculum and all of our year 10 assessments are going to be set at level five of the curriculum. So there's quite um, some quite rigid rules around our, our reporting. Uh, and for us, it was a bit, uh, but we struggled a little bit because it's sort of, for us, it's the, the tail wagging the dog where, you know, the way we report determines the way we assess, which determines the way we teach, which is quite the reverse of um, the way I'd, I'd like to focus on it. Um, but it has had some benefits, um, which I'll talk about later on. So um, as a department, we have always wanted to report more on the nature of science. Uh, so we took this opportunity with the changing of reporting with our school to um, stop reporting on the, the um, context strands of the curriculum and just report on the nature of science strand and basically collect evidence for the four nature of science achievement aims. So understanding science, investigating science, communicating in science and participating and contributing. We um, reworded participating and contributing to how science contributes to society, just so it doesn't get um, too confusing with the key competency with the same name. Uh, and we chose to talk about or report on the nature of science as opposed to the science capabilities um, as they are part of the curriculum, but we used the science capabilities a lot to help us develop our assessments uh, and to think about the language that we're using when we're talking about doing these four achievement aims. Um, so once we decided to report on the four uh, nature of science achievement aims, that led us to changing all of our assessments and we had to give the curriculum document and unpack these bullet points um, shown here at the bottom of the page into actual measurable, um, uh, measurable evidence that the students could demonstrate of their, their understanding. Um, and I guess from a secondary point of view, what's, what's quite different for us is that we're, we're coming from a, um, at our school, um, set content tests at the end of each unit that we cover. Um, so you'd do a botany unit and then you'd have a test on, on botany, um, just solely on, on content. So where we've headed, we've, for me, I feel like we've made big changes, um, but compared to what um, Katrina was just talking about, it might not seem like um, such a big shift, but for us, it's pretty um, substantial. And we've changed most of our assessments. We've almost changed them all. And um, by next year, they should all be changed to focus solely on the nature of science. Uh, so what it looks like for us in our year 10 program, um, we aim to assess each nature of science achievement aim twice, twice a year. Uh, and the students report that shows the highest grade that they've earned in each of those uh, achievement aims. So the picture at the top there shows the four nature of science uh, achievement aims at the top. And then uh, down the left hand side is the units and the assessments and the ticks just show which of the achievement aims they're going to be assessing. Uh, so I'll show you an example here of, of an assessment. Um, so this one, it's to do with our, it's our forces unit and students carry out practical when they, that they investigate in, in groups. Um, they choose some variables and they're gonna be talking about how their variable affects the performance of, of some machine. And we chose um, catapults of the Scientific America, so Scientific, Scientific American uh, website. They've got lots of really uh, fun hands-on experiments uh, there that we were able to draw from. Uh, and this assessment is looking at um, the understanding science achievement. Aim. And what we are looking at is not actually carrying out the investigation here. It's, it's, it's students' understanding of how specific techniques that they can do when they're doing an experiment improves the quality of data. For example, controlling variables, um, repeating and averaging, or comparing their results to another group's. Uh, and in this assessment, they got to do experience peer review firsthand, sort of behaving like scientists. So this is the, basically the instructions that the students um, get. They get to make catapults uh, like this. And we purposely left it quite um, open-ended and unspecific, the task. So they had to improve the performance of the catapults. They had to decide in a group how they're going to measure performance. Um, 
and they also had to have a play around first. This is sort of a timeline of how we ran the assessment. So the groups, they had to play with equipment and they thought about what variables um, they could change and what variables they could use to measure the performance of the, the catapults. Uh, and then in groups, they carried out the investigation. So they chose their variables to investigate um, and design their own experiment. Next, they presented their findings uh, to another group and the other group was able to ask them questions about what they were doing uh, in their investigation and how they knew that their data was reliable. Uh, and then finally, the, individually, the students would um, critique the presentations of, of uh, the other group. And it was only this last part that we, that we assessed. Um, I'll talk more about that later on. So for us, the way that we, that we measured this, this is a year 10 assessment, so it's, we set it at level five of the curriculum. Uh, so for a beginning level, we decided that means that they just need to state um, strengths and weaknesses of the investigation, uh, the method, the data, or the conclusion. Uh, and these words here in bold, like state, explain, and link, they basically come from NCA. So that's like an achieved level uh, at the top. Then for uh, a level five proficient, they had to go into a bit more depth and explain how that strength or weakness actually improved the quality of the investigation. And then finally, they need to make, for the advanced level, they need to make links between um, that strength and weakness um, forces, so the same concepts, and then also how that allowed the group to feel more confident in their conclusion. So it might be a bit easier to understand this with some examples of what the students might write. So for a level five beginning, this would basically be um, just stating three things that you can do to um, improve the quality of the investigation. So repeating and averaging would be one of three possible things they could write about. Uh, then for proficient, the students need to be uh, going into a bit more depth explaining how repeating and averaging increases the, the quality of the data. So if it's not just based on one result, it increases the quality of the data. And then for advanced, they're going into quite a lot of depth. Um, it actually explaining how repeating and averaging uh, improves the data. So high and low values cancel out, and you can be more confident into the data that you collect. So these are all very um, quite specific, um, and a lot of um, secondary science teachers feel like they really need these well, sorry, at my school, feel like they really need these um, rigid measures that they can um, differentiate between the, the different levels. Um, so that was just one example. We've got a few other examples of, of assessments. Um, so we do another unit around climate change and we have the students develop board games. Uh, and we use this for participating and contributing. So the students, design some board games um, and, and they use, um, I guess, reward and punishment mechanisms within the game to uh, reward, or sorry, to communicate their understanding to their target audience of climate change and factors that can speed up and slow down climate change. Um, one, of the, one of the teachers at my school um, actually took their class over to the, the primary school on the same campus as us and um, the students, has, their students um, talked to one another and they went back and the, the, the high school students, our students designed some board games and took them back to the, the primary school students as their, their target audience um, and got the students and the primary school to evaluate the, the communication that the students, our students used to demonstrate their understanding um, of climate change, which is pretty exciting for us. Um, we've got another unit where we're looking at students, getting students to make um, herbariums and dichotomous keys to uh, I guess differentiate between uh, different plants around our school. Um, we've got some research tasks around improving human health where students get to pick their own topic, topics that are relevant uh, to them, which they found a bit more engaging than our previous research assignments. Uh, and then other assessments, are, for example, um, our emergency water pro um, assessment where students get um, a bottle like the one shown there with a, a whole lot of 
bits and pieces in the piece of water, including dissolved salts, and they have to use their science skills to um, try and get their water as pure as possible. And we can use the lab equipment to try and quantify how pure, how clean their, their water is. Uh, quite a few of the assessments that we've developed, um, some have come from the Science Learning Hub or um, they are similar to other assessments that we found available there. It's a very good resource. So um, what have we found out from, from the changes we've made? Uh, so from talking to students, they tend to prefer these, these types of assessments to so I'm not sure if you can hear that. I've got a dog in the room with me and she's currently having a big drink of water. Um, so the, the students prefer these assessments to our, our usual written tests. Uh, because they're hands-on fun, they got to work with other, other um, of their peers. Another thing that is quite common in secondary schools is that the teachers tend to teach to the test if they know what's going to be in the test. Uh, and in this case, teaching the test was actually a good thing. Um, because it meant that this, the teachers were thinking about how to teach using um, natural science and science capabilities, which was, should be better for our students learning. Um, some downsides though, uh, because of equipment limitations, um, we had to rely on group work a bit, and this meant that some students were carried by other members of the group, or we weren't able to accurately measure individual students' um, understanding. Uh, and some assessments were too easy, some were too hard, or some took too long. Uh, we also did, um, like Katrina, Katrina we did um, NZCR thinking with evidence testing. Uh, and currently it doesn't show much improvement over our baseline from previous years. Um, but hopefully it will soon. So um, where are we heading next? Uh, we carried out a review of our units a couple of weeks ago. Uh, and we're making some small changes to improve the units and the assessments. We are looking at incorporating different techniques to try and more fairly assess uh, individuals' grades when they're doing group work. Um, we're going to look at trying to take some of the assessments that we've got that have been really successful and use them within different contexts instead of writing more assessments from scratch, which is it's quite hard to pitch them at the at the right level. And we've, gone through our assessments um, throughout the year, um, constantly improved and up updated them. Um, yeah, one thing that we're looking at is, is using a portfolio to get a more holistic measure of student progress. So it was really interesting looking at the, um, what you're doing with Seesaw um, and thinking how that could be applied in the secondary school context. Um, quite different to what we're currently doing, but I think it's um, just hearing the the shift in language that the students have and their, their whānau have um, is, is really exciting and it'd be great to see some more of that with our students. Um, so now we've sort of got to the point where our assessments are sorted, so that our reporting sorted, that we can finally focus on um, teaching better um, using the science capabilities. And I'm really excited about focusing on that more next year. And hopefully this will show um, a more positive effect on our students um, NZCR thinking with the events results. Um, yeah, that's, that's me. That's what we've been doing at Wyoming College. Cheers. Thanks, Drew. That's uh, very interesting. Very different, um, a different approach, but I can see how you sort of dovetail things together. Mm -hmm. Right. So, um, we will throw the discussion open and uh, any observations, questions, please go ahead. Just a, a comment, um, just to say that I think this particular approach that you've taken probably would feel quite achievable to a lot of schools where some of the other changes might not. So I think it, um, yeah, it's really great that you're able to share it because I think it, uh, a lot of teachers could see something that they could do in what you've shared today. So thank you. Oh, no worries. Yeah, it was, you know, talking with our staff, it, it, it's quite a daunting task for quite a few of them to, to drop their, their content tests. Um, you know, they really, really want to hold on to them and they think, oh gosh, if we, if we don't assess the student's understanding of balancing equations, how they're going to do uh, NCA level one. So, um, 
I feel like this has been quite a good good shift in the uh, the teach sorry the students really enjoy the assessments that we're doing and now the teachers are really enjoying them as well and can see the benefit of assessing in this way and how that's shifted their their, their teaching practice too which has been great yeah fantastic oh uh, hi drew it's ken here um hey, ken. I'm I'm interested because I think it's sort of an interesting strategy, you know, because you talked about um, the draw how assessment drives teaching, and that's very much that happening. That happens quite widely in secondary schools because of all sorts of factors, particularly mm. in terms of NC, NCEA and the way that that's been sort of um, delivered to schools, you know, since it began. Um, I think it's really interesting because what you've done is by changing the assessments to reflect what is compulsory in the curriculum, you have sort of sneakily but very cunningly um, um, got the teachers and the kids to think more um, explicitly about what they're doing in terms of the skills and dispositions of being a scientist. And, and clearly they're enjoying it and the, and, the, and the teachers are feeling more confident. What is interesting to me is that when you're noticing what the kids are doing in their group assessments, and you're, um, because you must be hearing the language and noticing what they're doing, you must, the teach, are you also still picking up what they are understanding in terms of content? Is that happening as well? Um, yeah, so each of the units we do, we deliver them in, they have to be in a, a context. Um, and they're still within our traditional um, yeah. units that we've, we've had, but we're not, um, for example, that forces unit there, we're not really assessing the understanding of forces. We are assessing the understanding of nature of science and their ability yeah. to critique another group's um, mm. investigation. Um, yeah, so we really are shifting away completely from assessing con content. Um, but, but, but during that assessment of of the nature of science, you mm -hmm. will also be getting an idea of individuals' understanding of content. Yes, yeah. So they can't they can't really engage yeah. with with the assessment fully yeah, without like having a good understanding of the content yeah. as well as yeah. It's sort of a win-win thing for everybody, isn't it? You know, it is. um, it is. for teachers who feel worried about leaving content behind can still also hear that the kids are actually using are actually developing their content knowledge. Yes. Through their ability to critique, you know? It, there's yeah. always, um, with, 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 I mean, this is one of the areas where you have the um, contrast between structure and process. Yes. And you actually need, it seems to me that the whole um, capabilities and natural science stuff is to do about process, but you can't have process without structure. And the structure seems to me to correspond to the actual content stuff. Now, the problem is that if you go overboard on one or the other, you lose out, you become unbalanced. It's like what happened to the um, British car industry that the, um, in the 60s, they had a process and the process was making old crappy cars. And they thought that if they carried on making more and more of them, that would be great but unfortunately Japanese people came along with a much more sophisticated process and beat them into the cocked hat because mm. the British people their structures involved rigid um, unionization and so on and so forth and lack of flexibility but if you go too far to the other extreme of, 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 of uh, lack of structure you've got nothing to support the structure that you've got and that you've got that, that balance has to evolve constantly so mm. it's not it's not i mean the fact that you've got to a situation where you are focusing more on capabilities and nature of science and so on and so forth it's it's an ongoing process you have to keep evolving you can't think it's ever going to be done do you know what i mean yeah or am i talking bs <laughs> <laughs> yeah um so i mean i guess an example to back that up um relating to our, our science classes so often you know we would have delivered a, an experiment where, you know, turn to this page and, and add the magnesium no, yeah. acid or, or, or whatever. But now, you know, the teachers realize there's just a little shift to that. Um, so, you know, 
focus more on the capabilities as opposed to just the, the content. Um, so I'm looking forward to uh, next year really be able to focus on on that aspect of it as opposed to yeah sneakily like you say Jen um, using our assessment to change our teaching practices but mm. just being able to be a bit more explicit about um, mm. ways that we can deliver our lessons that are deliver our content with more of that science capabilities focus mm. yeah it's really interesting yeah that was awesome drew thank you i love how one of the classes then um went away and engaged with the primary students taking what they'd learned and applying it effectively in a real world context um and you you talked a lot about their shift and how much they seem to be enjoying it uh, is there a way to measure how many students continue on as you move forward continue on with into the sciences versus how many might have historically um yeah yeah we do so um we've got a couple of ways of, of doing that um the, the first way um the same as katrina we use the um nzcr um science engagement survey so that's one one measure we've just collected more data for that which i'm going to start looking at uh tomorrow which i'm looking forward to seeing um the other thing that's changed for us uh is that uh, the year before last um, science, uh, year 11 science was no longer compulsory at my school. So um, we can use the, the number of students choosing to do uh, level one NCA science as a measure. And um, the numbers haven't, haven't dropped, which is, which is good actually. So that's showing that the students are seeing uh, value in, in, in what we're doing and we are still able to engage them um, and I guess, um, they're able to see the value of science for their everyday lives. Um, there is some more work that we can do there, uh, I think. Um, there's still quite a few students that choose not to take science, but um, yeah, it's, it's looking promising so far. Cool, thank you. How are we doing? Any more comments or questions or thoughts? Okay, well, I'd like to thank you guys for your presentations. That was a fabulous evening. And it's a shame that we had not got um, more people attending, but uh, this will be um, stuck up on the um, Facebook group and we can hope that people will look at the recordings. What I, wanted to, what I need to ask you, Katrina, some of your um, slides had um, pictures of the kids have yes. you got permission for their images to be shown publicly? Yes, yes. Okay, that, because I don't want to stick something up on YouTube and then find that people are sort of getting... No, no, those are absolutely okay, fine. Okay, jolly good. Tried to, tried to choose them judiciously. <laughs> <laughs> jolly good, I know that could be a bit of a problem, can't it? Mm -hmm. All right, so um, any other thoughts? In that case, I'd just like to wish you all a wonderful holiday and Christmas and um, festive season and all that sort of stuff. And um, take care. It's been great being with you. And thank you to our presenters. Cheers. Thank you all. Thanks, Katrina. Thank you, Drew. I really appreciate it. Well, thank you so much. It was really wonderful. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Thanks. Have thank a great you. Christmas. It's still excitement in science learning. <laughs> okay, I'm going to turn the end the meeting now. So thank you guys. Take care. Lots of love. Bye bye. Bye. bye.